I'm Lynn and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. Um, pretty sure today, if we're not combining, because we are not sure, but if we're not, we're going to be getting all those feeders that Arnie worked on the other day and try to set them back up in the barn so that we can take the remaining ones out and finish that barn off and get it off his back and get ready for breeding. So let's get started. As we head into the main barn, we can peek outside and see that all the rams are out there eating off of their bale of hay. And in the main barn, Arnie's just brought in a bale of hay for the breeding groups. Over here we got Hamish. Where's Hamish? I don't see him offhand. He must be at the very back. Where's Hamish, you guys? Right at the back there, he's looking at a U. There he is. You always got to make sure everyone's alive and well. You wouldn't think it would be an issue, but I bet you all sheep farmers, that's the first thing they check for when they go into the barns or into the fields. They're looking for dead sheep. So stop and say hello. Hi, Cracker. You going to come say hello? Come on. There you go. Was that too hard? Hey. Oh, you're a big baby. Hi, you two. Hi. Oh, you are a sweetheart, too. And so are you. Cracker, we've already seen you. Don't be demanding. There we go. There. Yeah. There. There, boys. I'm being summoned into this barn now. Oh, too late now. What? The two bands like each other. All through the window. Yeah. Oh, that's because uh, one of these girls is in heat, I think. Okay, so this is the window. Well, there's a girl in heat there, maybe. So we do have bars over the window there, but apparently these two rams have discovered each other. He's more interested in keeping this other guy away He's thinking that maybe he should reduce the size of the bales by half a foot in the future. Because round bales are extremely heavy. Ready? 
someone mentioned us not using markers on the RAM. And yeah, if it were up to me, I would have markers on the RAMs. We used to do it in the past, but with our size of sheep, the harnesses were appearing to look a little uncomfortable on the rams and then they would it would they would kind of slide over to the side so they were just a pain in the neck for always adjusting them so we decided to just leave them be that's why we leave them in with the ewes a little bit longer just to make sure that everyone is bred and it's usually never an in issue but uh, if you have a marker on, you do get to see if the ram is marking or breeding when the ewes are cycling because they'll get a patch of color on their behinds every day as someone new is bred. And if they don't catch that first breeding, every 17 days you have to switch the color of the marker and it will mark again. So you'll see who's repeating and you, if, if a lot have repeated you'd probably switch the color yet again a third time to see if the same thing's happening and at that point you might want to switch out your rams because it would indicate that probably he's not working because he's breeding and not um, getting results because if the ewe is bred she won't stand for him anymore because she won't be cycling. Um, what we really wanted to do though because since our sheep are so tame if you watch any of the videos from overseas, a lot of people, instead of the harnesses, they have like a colored paste that they just schmuck onto the ram's chest every few days as it wears off. And it's the same thing. He'll go around breeding everybody and you'll see the marking. That one, some people would think it was more labor intensive because you had to catch the ram every few days. But, like I said, ours are really tame, so it wouldn't be too difficult to slap paint on his chest and see how he's doing. However, we went to our supply store and they didn't have it here. So that was kind of disappointing because we truly had planned on using that stuff this year seemed like a good alternative for us because we could get them marked and the lambs would be comfortable because there were no straps pulling and tugging at them but there wasn't any so we don't use markers so what we generally do is at the end of each breeding season the last month we'll probably pull out all the rams and we put in a couple of cleanup rams. That way if anybody was missed or open, the cleanup ram will cover any of those girls and they'll be in like a straggler group at the end and we'll know uh, what's happening. When you come in the barn, Katie's always somewhere supervising things. And you know where Gladiator is because he's so long he sticks out a foot beyond everybody else. over to the gate so I can let her out. Come on, Katie. There you go. She used to just leap over the gates and bars. Never had to open gates for her. But old age affects us all, eh? Hey? Yes, it does. Back in the main barn here. Arnie's put another bale of hay out here. Cracker is exuberantly wait, waiting for 
his hay, which was, he was jumping up at the gate, so that made the others annoyed. This barn is a little more, even more difficult to roll out the bale because if you look at Arnie's head, he basically has to watch that he doesn't hit his head. These old barns have really low ceilings. Ben, get out of there. Hi girls, yummy? Are you being a good boy? Are you being a good boy? Once they get the food, fighting's out of the question now. You don't get a bottle anymore. You just get a good trimming. Hey? You're a good boy, Leonard. Yes, you're a good, good boy. You gotta get those ball gates up. Dirty nose off ya. There. That looks a little better. And he's doing that is to check for that you that goes under the feeder. To be honest, she hasn't done it quite a few days now, so maybe she's learned. I'm guessing she's not under there. But there's always someone standing on a box when you come in here. Someone asked us for the dimensions of the jumping boxes. The jumping boxes can be whatever dimension you want. Uh, they're just scrap lumber that we've put together and there's no template, nothing fancy about them. They're just boxes. Actually, some of them, these boxes here, were what pieces of the coverall came in, like um, the hardware and stuff. So we just used boxes that were already here. But you can make a box, a jumping box out of anything. We used to always use straw. Little straw bales, they love those too. And of course they don't last as long. And who are you? So we're just going to lock these girls outside while Arnie starts putting the feeders back in here. He got them all out now. They're not all finished. He's finished the first half. So he took the second half that he's got to work on out. And now we're just going to get these girls out of the way. Max! They're not going to the field, they're just going to go sit in the paddock for the afternoon. Come on. Come on, girls. Max, come here. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. That's it. Good boy. Stay there, stay there. Good boy. Probably not gonna actually like this too much because it's really hot out there today. 
again. But now we got lots of room and he's gonna take all the manure out from down the center where the troughs are gonna be laying back in. And he's a perfectionist. So when we put them back in, every feeder he wants to measure so that it's dead center of the barn. And they are happy about is that they get to go on their little scrubby there. Apparently he's got a flat tire. You gotta wonder where all these nails come from. Like, how can there be nails all over the yard? <laughs> oh, wow. Arnie's been working in the barn with those feeders. Oh, I managed to get the whole lawn mowed and I actually trimmed a whole bunch of branches that were whipping me in the face when I was mowing. Still have a lot more to trim, but you can only do so much in a day. So we'll head over there now and see how he's making yeah, it. I see he's got the manure out. I figured he would have done that. And he's putting the feeders in. So I'm guessing I'm here in the nick of time because I know he wanted help with the measuring to get them dead center. See, he's cleared a really nice level path down the center here. Looks like he might have even put some more gravel in to help keep it level. Yeah, we got quite a dip on either side, but like a little laneway back here. The laneway looks like nicer than our laneway actually. <laughs> Come here Ben. Ben. up and then he's putting little pieces of board underneath each corner just to keep it a little bit off the ground but it does get covered in manure anyway and then he bolts each one in maybe we should show the bolt So now, so now he measures each one towards towards you towards you that's the way I thought it was well yeah because now it won't slide on the wood you can kind of tell by looking if it's lined up or not, just by standing in the middle. You can tell it's over. It 
it shook. I don't know that it moved. Can't you just shove it with your skid steer? Because you wouldn't want your that to break. Only one more, I think. Maybe two more. That's for when we have four breeding groups or four lamb groups that splits the barn in half. So he's putting them in the opposite way to when he took them out. So we can't line that one up because one more has to go in for that to be the middle feeder. So these guys are going to come back in now. They're thirsty and hot and later on they'll get their hay. Hi, you're always the first one. So I'm gonna go in and make dinner. That's all we're doing for today. Well, as that noise permeates the atmosphere, <laughs> we're gonna call that a day. And thank you for joining us. And please join us again tomorrow for the next episode of Utopia Farms. Bye for now.